Yo babies, it's me, Uncle Robbie. Got a big announcement for you tonight on Media Blackout Live. So go get yourself a tall cold one, crack it open, and shovel it down your goddamn throat. <sighs> yeah. Okay, babies, I know what you're thinking. Like, what's Uncle Robbie got up his sleeve tonight? And uh, I got to tell you, God damn, I got a lot of bats blue up my sleeve, down my throat, and wherever the fuck else his beer goes, you know it's going there. But tonight, I want to introduce you to Primal Scream, Volume 1. The Beast is Back! The official... Reissue. So put this one up there for Keith Alexander, Steve Aliano, and of course moi. Because uh baby, this thing's out and it's out on Dive Bomb Records. Okay? You guys gotta get over there to Dive Bomb tra tra Trans Transbunal Transgender Tribunal. Dive Bomb Tribunal. Whatever. Matt's gonna hate me for this one, but guess what? Special promo code. If you use the promo code BROMO, B-R-O-M-O, you're going to get $1.99 off this album. That's right. And that's only because freaking when I was wasted the other night, I was writing to Matt and, uh, you know, just spouting off shit. And I said, why don't we use a promo code like BROMO? And he's like, BROMO, that'd be funny. And I'm like, I've never met Matt. I don't even know who he is. You want to talk about blind faith and getting this thing reissued? Okay. This thing got reissued. Of course, they basically, you know, disavowed any knowledge of me on it. But that's okay because it's out. It's actually out. Um, I don't know if you remember my video from about two years ago about me going to Great Albums Revisited. But that's how this ended up. Okay. So, um... Only given credit where credit is due, and uh, definitely got Matt. Uh, Matt's great from Dive Bomb. Got to tell you, the guy's a wonderful person. Okay, this thing is awesome. This thing is absolutely freaking awesome. Oh my god, let me let me show you a copy that's uh, that's open right now. All right, because uh, I'm sitting here. You know me, media blackout. <sighs> I am about ready. I'm still coherent, but. Oh my God, babies. Yeah, here we go. Here is the, it's a CD. Look how beautiful they did the actual, the actual disc itself up. I mean, that's pretty gorgeous. Look at the back, okay? There's a few differences um, from the original version to this version, but they got that beautiful picture on the back. See that there? You see that beautiful little, little motherfucker right here? That's me. That's me. Look how beautiful I used to be, huh? Anyway. Guys, we can't all look beautiful forever. But anyway, it's got a big, full 24 page. It's like, this is like like a huge, or is it 24 or 12? I don't know. It's just huge. I mean, look at this booklet. I, I got to tell you the truth. I feel like a real rock star right now. And, and I don't, I'm not going to cry because I'm actually too drunk to cry at this point. I was sober before, and I was kind of a little teary-eyed, but right now, I'm just like, yeah, MFers, bromos, bromos, look at that, Keith Alexander's BC Rich guitar, okay, it really, it really was a thing, and, and that's the only picture of it that I've ever seen online, this, this booklet has got stuff on it, oh my god, I, I was at practice last night on Tuesday, and I, Matt sent me the box, Matt is, from from dive bomb is probably one of the coolest dudes I've ever met. Never skyped with him, never do anything. This was all on blind faith. But when these showed up, I know he was real. I know he was real. Of course, you know how I know it was real. I'm not. 
even, you know, I didn't even get a thank you on this goddamn album. And I'm the one who put it all together. Trust me. Go to my original video um, from two years ago. Primal Scream, Great Albums Revisited. And that's how it all started. So basically, I'm giving myself credit where credit is due. But anyway, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Not my big ego. It, this is about a lot of other people's big egos, but they did me a great service. Look at that picture. Who's the big guy with the gorgeous long coat? Oh, my God. There's my long coat. That was actually my Uncle Bruce's coat. He left it in a, in a closet in Brooklyn, and I picked it up. So maybe we're all in the closet. There's a picture of uh, the next. Well, that wasn't the next version of Primal Scream. That was actually the version of Primal Scream. Anthony asked, I love him. He had great hair. And he lost a lot of weight. Um, and 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 Joe Haggerty and Steve. But um that was that was like Primal Scream uh 3.0. There's a picture in here of Primal Scream 2.0 though. And oh my god, this is like all the original, all the original, you know, propaganda we used to put out. This is this is great stuff. I love it. Oh my god, even more primal propaganda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad people can see this because I remember this stuff. But unfortunately, when I moved out of my last house, my box of precious stuff, my Uncle John took it and threw it onto the freaking um, fire, you know, the the burn pile. And he burnt it. And I actually know he did it because there was a lot of metal objects like crosses and stuff like this that I found there. So my Uncle John actually drove off a fucking uh, boat ramp and drowned himself. And here's the thing, Keith Alexander. Oh my God! Look at the bohem. Look at the bohem. He he looked great even without his hair. And of course, you know we I always do the beard like he did. Seriously, I seriously love this man. I really did love him. Look at that. That's him with the Zybanez. Um. Uh, like I said, he, this picture. This was after he left our band, or I left the band, or whatever. This is I think after Primal Scream, but. Keith was, and there's the actual BC Rich photo of the BC Rich uh, custom that he did. It was great because I actually stripped the body down for him, but it doesn't matter. I wasn't that important. I'm going to do follow-ups on this. Lyrics, all the lyrics. Oh, my God, this booklet is freaking beautiful. Um, more lyrics, more lyrics. Of course, Shot on Sight is on here. And Scream to Bleed, which was the best. This picture, I haven't seen it myself in years. That, I think, is the greatest live-action shot of me. And all them grunge people like, Yeah, we were wearing flannel. Fucking, dude, I was wearing a plaid shirt, goddammit, back then. I was so hot. Look at me. Look at us. Look how hot I was. It was beautiful. And there's there's Rock. He was our one of our throcking, our throcking cavemen. Oh, there's another one with Anthony. Anthony Asti was actually a very good friend of mine. I mean, really good friend of mine. I replaced, basically, I didn't get the walk. This thing says, they gave me my walking papers. No, it was basically like, I left Primal, and then the guys from Von Helsing, who had Anthony, but I was on all of Von Helsing's recordings. I mean, I played more, like, as far as minutes on, on recorded minutes, I played more recorded minutes on Von Helsing than I did on Primal Scream. So anyway, um, and there's Richard Day. I love this guy. He he was my immediate replacement, and I was like, yeah, he's probably good enough to replace me. You know, he ended up being in Whiplash, and Whiplash used to well open for us, or we opened for them. I don't know. He took one of the Tony's replacements, and um, I remember the Tony, the bass player. I doused him with beer at this place. In Long Island. So anyway, guys, um, Primal Scream, here's some interviews. I mean, this thing's got it all. I mean, this is the history of Primal. We we're only around for a very short time. And um, to set the record straight, me and Keith started the band. I knew Steve from Death Slayer. And I hope Matt really will do this um, whole, you know, podcast thing. He promised me I could do a podcast with one of his you know, cohorts or whatever. I hope he does, and I want. I hope we can do it, like, live on Skype, because I would love to put that up as, like, you know, a definitive, um, 
you know, my side of the story. Because if you look at the interviews in here, okay, here's one of the reasons I quit Primal Scream. I wasn't given my marching orders. I quit. They wouldn't let me do the interviews. They wouldn't. They. I did. To, I did get to write two songs on the album. Keith took credit for half of the music on uh, Scream Should You Bleed because it's like bam 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 I wrote the rest of the song. Matter of fact, that was a Black Virgin song before it was a Primal Scream song. So anyway, no sour grapes. I'm so glad. Oh my God, this is out. Steve Aliano, if you ever watch this, dude, you know what? Y your kid was in college here in Oneonta, literally 10 minutes from my house for like four years. Never called me. Never let me get a chance to meet you and your beautiful family. Take you to Brooks. Don't know why. Probably you hate me because like, you know, I date trans women and... I know there's a lot of homophobic feelings in the uh, metal community, and, and and that sucks, but, or maybe it's just because I'm a psychopath, and I went to the army and learned how to shoot people at a thousand yards. I don't know. Maybe that's one of the reasons why people are afraid of me. I don't know. Anyway, I just want to tell everybody, don't be afraid of me. I love you more than anything. This is the end of my life, and I'm so glad that I got to see this come out. Before I die, because um, it's it's well, actually, it's the only thing I've ever done that anybody ever got. I've done music for years after this, for the last thirty years, I've done it, but no one ever released it. This is the only thing that I've ever done that was ever actually released, and that's upsetting. And it's not because I didn't want to release it; it's because the people I was playing with didn't want to release it. And that really sucks, you know? The one thing I gotta tell you uh, uh, to all you musical divas, you know, the, the stars of the band, okay? And well, I did this while smoking one cigarette. Can I tell one thing to you musical divas, the stars of the band? When you guys decide, I don't wanna do this anymore, I don't wanna play anymore, guess what? You're putting everybody else out of fucking work, okay? So everybody, you know, freaking. I won't even name names, but if I actually get to do a podcast, maybe I will talk about them. I don't know, but I won't do it on a live recorded thing, but you and Blacksmith, I don't want to do this anymore. Nah, I'm too, ah, screw you. You know what? You put me out of a fucking job, okay? Anyway, Keith, Keith never gave me my marching orders. I left, okay? And the reason I want to just dispel this one thing, because there was one interview where it said Rob was given his marching orders. Bullshit. I quit. And the reason why I quit was Keith wanted me to go on a date with some dude from a record company. And I was like, dude, I'm not having that. I mean, now I think about it, like, you know, it was a really big record company. How bad could it have possibly been? You know, especially, you know, I mean, maybe a, maybe he was the bottom. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But how bad could it have been? You know? But I think about it. You know, if I'd have become a rock star, the amount of drugs we were doing back then? I don't know. I don't know. I'd probably be dead by now. So, but it would have been a great ride. So, I don't know. Yeah, I do regret it. I do regret it. How bad could it have freaking been? Keith, I miss you, baby. Anyway, this is the ultimate tribute to Keith Alexander. Steve, not you so much, because, like, you, you know, you, you, you de demonetize me. What's the word for, like, making somebody smaller, you know? I was the most important thing in this band. The reason why I fell apart was because I wasn't there no more. There was nobody to drive the van. There was nobody to get the road crew together. There was nobody to get Keith out of bed and take him to goddamn the dentist office every goddamn day, you know? I really want to tell the fucking real story about this album. And Karianne, if you watch this, you know I love you. I miss your mother. I went to see your mother. <sighs> it was beautiful. I love your dad. Your dad was the most wonderful guy. I still can't play Malaguena. That's a personal message to her. So there's no hard feelings between me and her, anybody in the road crew, except maybe Webb a little bit, but all's forgiven. You know, it's been 30 freaking five years. You know, 
And me? I can't say keep on rocking.